guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to keep it a little bit more casual. I just wanna go over all the equipment that I have to make these YouTube videos. So this was the camera that I previously had attempting to make YouTube videos with and it is the older Nikon D5100. It's primarily meant for photography, but it does have the video capabilities. So I upgraded because the autofocus is terrible on this camera with the continuous autofocus not really meant for video. It's quite loud with the motors that are in these lens. Right now you're looking at me through the Nikon D5100 in a 35 millimeter 1.8 lens. It's an older DSLR camera from sometime in the 2010s. Where it doesn't quite meet up to expectations is that the continuous autofocus doesn't quite work very well. It does do face tracking, but mostly works in still mode, but in video mode, it kind of takes a while to, or if even, focus. Yeah, it's not the ideal camera to be doing this because I can't really tell if I'm focused, even though there's a screen there because of the shallow depth of field, just moving a little bit can take me out of focus which led me to get the A6400 Sony mirrorless camera with the kit lens, which is a 1650 millimeter zoom lens. The great thing about this is that it does have really good facial autofocus. It does do 4K in a couple of different bit rates and a couple of different frame rates as well. So for what I use it for, it's an excellent camera or setting it on a tripod and then not really having to worry if I'm in focus or if the subject's in focus because it does a really good job of autofocus. It also has a couple of things that make it really useful for shooting YouTube videos. Number one is that it has the audio meter at the bottom of the video display. The auto meter is really important because then I can actually check the levels of my audio to make sure there is audio going into that. Like right now, I can't tell if I'm actually speaking and things are going into the camera. So I can only tell afterwards. The one thing I don't like about it is the flip up screen. Isn't the greatest because you have to put it pretty much all the way forward before the video at the top reverses. If you put it this way, you can't really use the hot shoe here for putting a mic because it will obscure the display. So what I did is I bought a little rig here that sets off to the side. It doesn't quite get in the way and I can put my, I don't even know if you saw that from the focus, I can put my external mic on there. For the majority of the shots, I use the kit lens, which is a 1650 millimeter lens. It has optical image stabilization. So it's called uh, optical steady shot as Sony calls it. So it has built-in lens stabilization, which isn't, a big thing for me because most of the time I'm on the tripod. And what I use for a tripod is this Manfrotto tripod. It is not the best in terms of like this movement here, even though it is, it, it has like a video setting on it. It's very stiff and not exactly the smoothest moving. So it's not really good for video if you're doing a lot of panning tilting, things of that nature. It does come with this weird, but sort of useful plate at the bottom. So you can screw this at the bottom of your camera and then allows you to quickly pop it in, pop it off. Uh, the only downside is if you lose these, they're $30 a pop, so don't lose it. It goes into this carrying case with a little drawstring holder and it's great for camping actually. I can just bring it along with me and set it up pretty quickly. So I'm also using this Manfrotto mini tripod as well. This is pretty good because it can articulate just with a push of this little button here. I can change this angle with this button and once I release it, it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't move. I also use this GoPro Hero 5 Session along with this little, I guess it's a mini tripod leg 
from Zhiyun. And this is what I used to capture video on my alternative channel. So any sports footage or riding my bike or running, I usually have this, tuck it into my pocket, pull it out when I need to, and then just like selfie the hell out of myself or other people on the road. So for audio, if I'm doing any sort of voiceover type work, I have this Tascam DR70X, which is a portable voice recorder. It has the, I could make it go into different setups for the mic, but for voiceover work, I just have it such as that. A little pop filter from, I think this, this, this little arm and this pop filter is also from Newer, Newer, which is an Amazon thing. Not from Amazon, but you can buy it from Amazon. The cool thing about this is I can record directly to the USB card that is on here, but I can connect a USB cable here, run it to my computer, and it acts as a USB microphone. And that's how I do most of my voiceover work, which is connects straight from here into the computer and do the voiceover that way. And then this thing here is a pop filter because with p, p, like the plosive sounds, it makes the audio just peak and spike and it doesn't sound that great. So the, it's pretty much just a, like a piece of nylon. There is fairly inexpensive, maybe 10 bucks or something. And I'm using the Rode Wireless Go system here of uh, lavalier mics. These are pretty cool because they sound great. And if you can see in here, it allows me to have consistent audio regardless of where I'm pointing the mic. You can see from the top there, it has the microphone input and it also has the microphone itself in there. And the obviously the downside is that it is a big square thing there that is pretty noticeable. So in any of the videos, if you're looking at this and in some other circumstances, I will also use this shotgun microphone with the connection here. So this is a self powered. It doesn't have a external power source into it. And then I will connect that directly into the camera. The current setup right now, it has a wind muff, the fuzzy dead cat thing to reduce wind noise for outdoor shooting. And you may notice there's all this, this is actually to protect against RF interference because without it, this picks up a ton of noise from cell phones and from Wi-Fi routers, things of that nature. And the computer that I'm using is this computer that I built in 2017. It has a GTX 1070 Ti graphics card GPU. Right now it's running a Ryzen 9 3900 X CPU from AMD and a Corsair all-in-one cooler for the cooling. It has 64 gigs of RAM at the moment, which is maxed out. That's all I can put on there. And a bunch of storage. I think it has like a one terabyte M.2 SSD. And I'm running a dual screen with mismatch monitors currently, an LG and an Asus monitor. This one's 4K, this one is 2K. This is where I do my work. This is where I edit my videos pretty much. Video editing software and the one I'm using is called DaVinci Resolve 16. I can't really justify paying the extra money for Adobe Premiere. This is free, it's great, and it pretty much meets all of my needs as a uh, hobbyist YouTube creator. And this is the state of my desk on a usual basis. It's just got my iPad and my Surface Pro along with all the knickknacks, my USB headset for conference calls and my work computer, MacBook Pro. And 
the wall here is sound absorbing acoustic foam so it prevents some of the bounce around the room when I'm doing any of the voiceover. I still probably need a couple of more but for the time being it seems to work, does the job. The studio itself is actually quite tiny. It's also primarily my office. I have some acoustic phone here because without it, it gets a lot. It sounds like a bathroom really because of the size and all the flat, hard panels on, on the wall. Uh, yeah, I can almost touch my head on the roof. I have to be careful of this lights. It is, I guess it's a little bit short of a ceiling. It's about a seven foot ceiling. So if I tiptoe, my head will touch the ceiling. Yep. All right, moving on to the lights. These are some cheap umbrella lights from a company called Newer, New, Newer, Newer. Uh, it came in a set of three, I believe, or two, but they're a hundred bucks for this, the umbrellas, and there's a whole green screen apparatus that went along with it. So I have these lights here, which are some LED panel lights from, again, Newer, that act as fill lights or accent lights in order to give a little bit more depth to my face in the shots. This is just my um, man-child setup here, Nerf blasters. If I want to go and, you know, play Nerf guns with my son, um, they're all here making me look like a big man-child, whatever. And random assortment of crap on this old crappy Ikea shelf. Uh, this here, I do jujitsu and judo, and these are just the belts that I've accumulated along the way. So the sport of judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which I can't really uh, do too much of these days because of social distancing and all that. Can't really fight other people at a distance. Haven't gotten my Hadouken skills up to par yet, so they're just kind of hanging up there, taunting me. I miss it so much. It's continuously evolving how I film and the setup. You can probably go through my old videos and see that I've been in at least three different places in the house to shoot the videos. Right now I'm in a smaller room in the basement because I just want that little extra quietness when doing work, like work work. But I've also turned it into a YouTube studio. So that was my studio and all the equipment that I used to make these YouTube videos. If you have any questions about the process, then uh, just hit me up in the comments. Mm -hmm.